This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Pokemon has a lot of different groups that categorize the types of Pokemon you can encounter beyond just their types. Some are starters, some are legendary, and some are good. But with the multitude of groups that categorize each and every Pokemon, some get mistaken for others. I've been playing Pokemon my whole life, and it wasn't until Generation 7 was just about to be revealed that I found out about mythical Pokemon. I mean, they were mythical, I wasn't going to believe that. One of the groups that gets a lot of mistakes is one of the most prominent ones with legendary Pokemon. While some Pokemon do have that magical appeal that legendary Pokemon happen to have, a lot of Pokemon are also special to fans that they can easily be mistaken for legendary. And while they are legendary in their hearts, they aren't legendary according to the lexicon of the Pokemon company which dictates who's legendary and who's not. And while it's not a big deal to mistake these Pokemon, it'll be fun to see which 10 are the most mistaken Pokemon for legendary Pokemon and the different reasons that give these Pokemon such a legendary feeling that they're commonly mistaken to be in this rare group of Pokemon. These are the top 10 Pokemon you thought were legendary, but aren't. Number 10, Unknown. Unknown was a very interesting and unique Pokemon that always happened to surround legendary Pokemon. In the movie Pokemon 3, Entei was surrounded by things you might not be aware of. Unknown are also found flying around Arceus as well during its group project, where it completed the power point all by itself without any help from the actual legendaries in the core four. Turns out the whereabouts of some of these legendary Pokemon were unknown. I didn't see Giratina or Palkia's signature after that presentation. The main thing that made a lot of people mistake Unknown for being a legendary Pokemon, besides always being around them, is its eerily different design. It's really just the alphabet made into flying little sky fragments that also only have the move hidden power. I know when I go to the grocery store to get a can of alphabet soup and start eating it, I think, wow, this is legendary. The look and surrounding mystery of this Pokemon was very different from most Pokemon and felt like there was a lot more to a Pokemon that wasn't just an animal or piece of nature. It was also very hard to tell what was legendary or mythical or just a regular Pokemon back in the day as they weren't necessarily shown with an official title. And along the way, when you maybe see them in the movie, or that cutscene with Arceus, or even upon encountering legendary Pokemon that aren't on the box art in Generations, after Generation 2, you might think Game Freak is trying to pull a fast one by hiding little legendary Pokemon all around. Number 9. Arcanine. Arcanine has a very different way of being mistaken for a legendary Pokemon. While Arcanine is legendary, to me, it also has a species of legendary. Which I've said before, so we don't need to go into that. However, even the animators of the anime mistook Arcanine for an actual legendary Pokemon. It's not really that they mistook it, it's that Arcanine was planned to be a legendary Pokemon and put on the graphic in the anime of the three birds plus their dog. And with a look like that, how can you not want this big ball of fluff to be one? I mean, it does need this status, however, due to this part of the anime depicting it as a legendary Pokemon, it was mistaken for quite a bit of time as an actual legendary Pokemon. Number 8, Ditto. Similar to Unknown, Ditto had its own unique move pool. It was only able to use Transform when it was itself, but when it turned into another Pokemon, it could do a knockoff version of everything they worked towards and sell it for a profit. Ditto's design was rather unique. However, the primary thing that had Pokemon fans mistaking it for a legendary Pokemon was the theory of its roots being connected to the failed attempt of trying to clone Mew to create Mewtwo. This was pushed as a theory as the primarily common location to encounter this Pokemon was where the journals of the scientists who were dealing with Mewtwo were kept. While Ditto isn't the only Pokemon being mistaken for a legendary in the section, as Mew is a mythical, mythicals were not as well known as they were really only mentioned in Japan in the early days of Pokemon. Ditto in itself, however, still had a lot of characteristics pushing this narrative. Its incredibly different approach to being a Pokemon compared to most Pokemon, where it transformed into them and stole their moves with an exclusive move that was only able to be used by it and Mew, is something that was very noticeable to fans that made a lot of people think it couldn't be just a regular Pokemon without its own special group. Number 7. Absol. Absol has a lot of mysterious ties. The fact that it looks rather complete in its look and didn't evolve in any way until it was given a Mega Evolution did help to mix in the idea that it might be legendary. It did feel linked to a lot of legendary Pokemon in the anime as well and felt like a rare Pokemon to encounter in the wild. 
But one of the main things that definitely pushed it up on the radar for Pokemon fans to think it was a legendary Pokemon that Game Freak was just casually integrating in was the movie poster of Jirachi Wishmaker. It had a little bit more of a starring role compared to other Pokemon, and as Absol was the Pokemon that could sense disasters and show up and tell you about it without actually stopping it, it gave off a different feeling compared to just regular Pokemon. It's still a standout Pokemon from Generation 3, and a lot of people's favorite Pokemon for its different and radiant integration to the games. Number 6. Rotom Look, we've all made mistakes. Even I've been around long enough to think Rotom was a mythical Pokemon. I mean, I think it was legendary, so I think I should be given at least a slight free pass. But also people thought this was a serious video, and not a parody from the early days of me just starting out to make top 10s consistently, before I knew what views were, and the fact that people could share theirs in the comments. Rotom is one of those special cases, which is funny, because its phone version doesn't come with an equipped case. What if you dropped your floating Rotom ghost phone, and didn't purchase Rotom Care? With a small mythical looking design and ability to transform into different household appliances while swapping its typing, it really looked like this Pokemon could be in the Legendary group or the Mythical group, which was also mistaken for Legendary group. One of the features of the Rotom Pokemon is its ability to appear in Generation 4 while playing the Legendary Pokemon encounter music. This confused a lot of people into thinking it was a legendary Pokemon, as this song only plays when legendary Pokemon appear. And Rotom, apparently. Rotom is the only non-legendary Pokemon to have this music playing, as it's literally four legendary Pokemon. And Rotom, apparently. Like, for absolutely no reason it plays when you encounter Rotom in the Haunted Den, as it comes out of the TV. The overall quest as well did add a lot of surrounding questions as to whether this was a legendary Pokemon or not. Because while going on this quest, and then seeing it appear, finally encountering it, and hearing the music as you try to catch it, you might think, wait, was this a legendary Pokemon quest? And no, it's not, it's just this really detailed encounter with some nice music to meet this uncategorized Pokemon called Rotom. Number 5. Spiritu. This is another Pokemon that I thought was legendary, or at least mythical with its different way of being captured, and a lot of fans fell into that train of thought as well. There's always something about Pokemon that look eerily complete in their design, and even have interesting looks that also don't evolve, that give off that legendary type of feeling. Spiritomb felt like a very storied Pokemon, and the fact that it had its own little monument where you need to bring a rock to it to unlock an encounter was another one of those catfishing quests that gave you the misleading perspective that might make you think you were meeting up with a legendary Pokemon. You had to get an odd keystone and then go into the underground and talk to 32 people and bring it back to the hollow tower to unlock the spirit from within. Which I'm pretty sure is the plot of most anime movies. Number 4. Every mythical Pokemon. Literally every single one. I mean, it started with Mew of course, as mythical Pokemon weren't a very well known thing in the early days of Pokemon. But even to this day, you'll still see a lot of comments, I'm <coughs> sorry, you'll see a lot of comments telling me I forgot a legendary Pokemon to add to a list, but it's actually a mythical. I mean, there's no real fault besides the education system, but even back in the day I used to just combine mythicals and legendary Pokemon into one group when I was making a video about legendary Pokemon because I didn't want to have to make two videos, one for mythicals, one for legendary, and then have people asking where's Shaman on my list. So I decided to take the safe route as most people just think of mythicals as legendary Pokemon because they're basically the same thing. Mythicals are just the beyond burger of regular burgers when it comes to comparing them to legendaries. Sometimes they even taste better. But eventually I had to move away from that because people started commenting that they weren't legendary. So by that point I learned to just pick my battles. And also I learned a first hand experience of peer pressure. All in all, the real reason every mythical Pokemon is on this list is because if you gave a random person a list of every mythical and legendary Pokemon and asked them to differentiate them into each group, there's nothing that makes it apparent. Sometimes it is the size, mythicals can be smaller and cuter. But then you get to Arceus and the only difference between Arceus from Dialga, Palkia and Giratina is the Whole Foods label underneath each of them saying whether they're ripe or not. Number 3. Lucario it's not just because Lucario can be mistaken for one with the aura that surrounds it, it's because it's also constantly desired to be a legendary Pokemon that Lucario fans will put their hands over the ears and start making sounds so they can't hear you say it's not. It's just a really popular Pokemon that also got a movie, and its own landmark in Pokemon with a character that cosplays as it that made it stand out a lot more. 
It was Gen 4's Pikachu in every way, just with an added oomph in its final evolution that made it feel like it must have its own category. Number 2. Volcarona Just like Lucario's fans wanting it to be a legendary Pokemon, and also mistaking it for one, Volcarona had the exact same thing, but more so in the idea that everything surrounding it should have given it the legendary status. Volcarona's design is really magical. You've got powdered dust flying everywhere around it, that could be from the dreams it had to one day be a legendary Pokemon, or from its fall from grace when it didn't make the cut. It's also a much different looking bug than most. While most bug types sort of sit in their own early route lane, Volcarona had that royalty status that made it feel more special. Honestly, it looked to be the legendary bug of this generation, while Genesec was the more rogue warrior mythical Pokemon. Volcarona's in-game quest as well, with the main villains of Pokemon surrounding it, also created a lot of confusion, as that's as legendary of a quest as it gets. And encountering it at such a high level in a guided encounter is incredibly rare to see for a non-legendary Pokemon. It looked like another Arcanine case, where it was planned to be a legendary Pokemon, but ended up as just a regular Pokemon with a little bit of special treatment. Number 1. Zoroark Zorak has everything you would think would make it a legendary Pokemon that each of the last entries had. It had a different unique type of design that stood out, it had its own quest, it had a full movie where it's the main character, but what really makes this the number one Pokemon that you thought was legendary, but wasn't, was the fact that when you encountered it for the first time in its quest in Generation 5, it appears as a legendary Pokemon. That is the most intricate way you could mistake a Pokemon for a legendary Pokemon. You encounter it in this quest, you mistake it for a suspicious woman that attacks you at first, so it's also the number one Pokemon you mistook for a suspicious woman that wasn't, and then you get into a battle with this woman, and all of a sudden you think you're battling a legendary beast. No, that's Zoroark, it just transformed into a legendary Pokemon. That is a long line of mistaking that you can do before you find out what Zoroark really is. It's just an imposter. One thing you won't mistake is the versatility of Squarespace. Remember when Einstein said E equals MC squared? He was talking about opening up a new site on his Dell laptop with Squarespace. Have a project you're passionate about starting? Get Squarespace to start those projects you've been putting off and advertise them to everyone on the internet with a new site you can create with Squarespace. Squarespace has the best in-class website templates and customizable layouts to fit your needs. Browse each category to find what suits you best. I know Albert would have jumped to that health and beauty category right there. It suits him in every way. Be close with your visitors as you have a traffic overview to gain insight into what's helping your new site grow. With analytics as good as this, there will be no space between you and your visitors. You'll be so close. And with how close you've all gotten, you can use the Squarespace members areas to connect with your audience and generate revenue through the members only content that you've created in this all in one easy to use platform. Head to my special link in the description below for a free trial, and when you've found out what you want to launch, click on that link again at squarespace.com slash to save 10% off your first purchase of a new site.